today and leading us by your Holy Spirit in Jesus name touch every life I pray with a special guiding influence of your Holy Spirit put your hand on your heart say Lord guide me by your spirit guide me by your spirit lead me by your spirit let me know what I shall do next Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, today I want to share with you on where shall I go next? Where shall I go next? All right. Maybe next week will be who? Oh yes John chapter 8 And verse number 12 What's that? All right Today is a very short but important message So I want you to listen carefully All right. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Amen. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right. This is a famous scripture. All right. Most of us don't know how this scripture came about. I am the light of the world. When my father in law was alive, one of the things that he kept on saying when I visited him in Takaradi, he always didn't want me to drive in the night. Because I like driving in the night. (laughs) <laughs> so because it was you know during the day there was so much traffic yeah but there are so many dangers in the night especially now there are even more dangers yeah and uh if you drive on the road now, you find that they haven't changed for the last 30 years. It's about the same. So, daytime is different because um, you can see. So, it's like some dangers will not be there. Trucks parked on the road. I know somebody who drove. There was a truck parked on the road. And they drove straight. When I was in Achimota school. He went home to bring his father's car. You know we have a place called. The Plains. Where we, we, we bring your father's car. And go round, 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 round. And then dust comes up. And then they say you are wild. You know, I don't know what is wrong with us. When we are at a certain age, some things impress us. Screeching. Yes. 
So you go round, 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 round. People are standing around and saying, Yay! This guy is wild. So he went to Tema and was coming. And there was a car parked on the Tema motor. He drove straight under the car. It was a terrible thing when we were, we were in school. Yeah. And he, di- he just died. So these type of things can happen, especially in the night when you can't see. Or if you have a what we call self-induced night. What is that? When you fall asleep whilst you are driving, night comes also. Yes. So, danger, all right, is increased. And hurt. There is more pain. When you are walking in a dark room, how many have had that experience where you hit your shin against something sharp? Like a bed or a table or something. Have you had that experience before? Lift up your hand. Yes. So when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's explaining that he is light so you will have deliverance from pain. The pains that are in this world. The painful experiences. And you will have the ability to navigate away from the painful experiences that are in this world. There's pain in this world. There's pain. There's hurt. There are painful things. How many have been experienced something painful before? Raise your hand. Do you want to share with your neighbor what painful thing you have experienced? No, you don't want to share. Okay, no problem, no problem. You don't have to. It's okay, it's okay. No problem, no problem. Those of you online, you are welcome. Online. Yeah, yeah. You want to share your painful experience? If you are part of this world, you experience pain sometimes. But Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me, look at it, shall not walk in darkness. So when you follow Jesus, when you follow Jesus, you will not walk in darkness. You, so you will have light, but you have the light of this life. This life's light. The light you need for life. The life you need for life. A brother said something when his father was dying in the hospital. He went to see his father, a man of God. And his father said something to him. He said, when he visited his father for the last time, a father told him that, He's been through life and just when he was beginning to understand what life was about, it was time to die. So he wanted to pray for his son to also understand life earlier. Yes. Because if you don't take care, you understand what is happening only at the end and realize what was happening to you. So, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of this life that we are in. I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. But at a very young age, about... 25, 26. By that time, I felt that I only wanted to serve God. Now, who could have given me such direction for my life? Who could have? My father, no. My father, my earthly father, had guided me up until that point. 
But to be in the ministry, no. My mother, no. My mother is here. Yes. But Jesus was the light trying to guide my life. Should serve him. And as I've stayed on as the years have gone by, I'm glad that I serve him. Especially as I approach eternity. All those who chose not to serve the Lord and those who chose to serve the Lord, it is amounted, we have all not lost weight. Yes. We all have cars to drive. We all have somewhere to stay. God hasn't forsaken me or left me, you know, to just be hungry because I've served him. No. I'm grateful for that light. Now, some years later, I remember one sister, she was a nurse in London. She said to me, she said to me, Bishop, Daddy, I don't know what she called me at that time. She said, it seems that you saw something long ago when you decided to serve the Lord. Because she was now about to enter. She's in the ministry today. But she said, it seems you saw something long ago. What did you see? I said, what I saw is what you are now seeing. The light. Lighthouse. Amen. So, what is a lighthouse? What is a lighthouse? A lighthouse is... A light by the coast and it flashes, it goes and comes and goes and it helps to guide the ships. Because in the darkness, uh, honestly, it's really scary and really, there's no way of knowing where it's left, where it's right, where it's straight. Are you with me? Yes. So that's why there were lighthouses along the beaches, along the coast, everywhere there's a lighthouse to know the way. To know that at least don't come near here. And especially the lighthouse where there are rocks. And don't come here or come here. One of them is guiding. Because God is trying to show us the picture of darkness. Darkness everywhere. And Jesus showing us the way. In the midst of the darkness. Job said it in Job 29. Um, he said, you were my candle in the darkness. You were guiding me in the darkness. Amen. Job 29 verse 3. It says, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. All right, Job, the book of Job is one of the most celebrated books of the Bible. The book of Job is considered to be actually the oldest book, even older than Genesis in the Bible. Yes. And he said, Job said in verse 2, Job said in verse 2, are you watching? Oh, that I were as in months past. As in the days when God preserved me. What do you mean by God preserved me? God protected me. If you like, read from verse 1 so you understand the context. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, I wish I was as in the months that are past. As in the days when God preserved me. How many want God to preserve you? Okay, what was that like? Verse 3. When his candle shined upon my head. All right. There was a light right on top of my head. And when by his light, I walked through the darkness. I walked through the darkness. Yes. One of the scary things about forests is what will you step on? It's scary. First of all, what is in the forest? 
I have two pastors that are special to me. One is a former fisherman from the canoes. Because, you know, Peter and Go were fishermen, so he was a fisherman. He's now a, one of our pastors. In, he's in Trinidad. Is it Trinidad or Guyana? Guyana. And the other pastor was a hunter. So one day I asked him, how do you hunt? He said, oh, we, we, had, we had a, we have, a, I don't know if he had a light. So I said, are you not af- were you not afraid? He said, I, I, we were not afraid. So he said, they, they walked through the forest. I think he even said he walked barefoot. <laughs> through the forest. How many are ready to do that? You see, you don't want to do that because it's dark. Dark places are scary places. So, God is going to be your candle. Amen. Yesterday, I was coming from Washington in the night. And if you look at the map, you see the plane when it takes off eh, from Washington. He flies over the darkest ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic is the way, I don't know. It, it's very dark. There are many dead people in that ocean. All the Second World War people that drowned, they are all in that ocean. And when it takes off, you see him moving through the night, the dark. They always try to stay near an airport. But when you are going over the ocean, sorry. Sorry for left. They just have to go over the ocean. So as we are in the plane, we are praying that this man is following a good candle. What about if he doesn't follow the right candle? One day I, I was talking to a pilot student. Student pilot. He was flying, um, you know, Boeing 737, the big one. I mean, they're not so big, but he was practicing. You know, you have to fly a certain number of hours. And you have to fly alone. Oh, yes. As a student. (laughs) Huh? Yes. And you have to fly in the night. And land in the night, in the day, in the night, in the day, and in the night, to be to pass your exam. And I said, "Is it that you can't see what? What is it?" Then he told me about a plane. I'm not mentioning the airline. They were going somewhere. Eh? with everybody on board and they flew and they flew and they flew and when they landed I think they were in the Philippines but that is not where they were going he told me he said it's not that he is there he said immediately they took the pilot off whatever and that was the end of it to the office I mean that was it but everybody has come to I think Philippines because he wasn't looking at the candle. I don't know what exactly happened. Yes. Oh yeah, that was the end. Where shall I go next? <laughs> so today, how many want to have a good candle and a good uh, screen? Yes. The candle of the Lord. He says, when his candle shine on me so god's word is a light thy word is a light for my path 
Thy word is a light for my path. You, you must have seen that. There, there's a book they used to give us in secondary school. What was it called? Light, light for my path. How many want a light for your path? Oh, yes. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. How many want a lamp unto my feet? Receive today a lamp unto, unto your feet. And that lamp is God's word. Thy word. Thy word. Now, on an Akazo campus, we have one of our pastors. Are you listening to me? No, or maybe you are, I'll go to my, if, if you are feeling tired. Okay. On an Akazo campus, we have a pastor, one of our pastors, yes, who, who is there, whom we call whenever a snake is sighted. He's a reverend. Yes. If a snake is, lo- is seen anywhere, if the snake makes a mistake of showing the face, we call him. Yes. Number one, he has no fear. And then number two, he has a personal hatred <laughs> for snakes. Eh? Yes. He has number one, no fear. And then number two, a personal hatred. So one day I was with him, I asked him, where, where did you develop this hatred for these snakes? Then he explained to me that one day he went, I think, on a boat in a river. I don't know where they were going or, or something. And then when they arrived, they, they got out of the boat and they were walking in the night. I'm talking about a lamp for my feet. As they were walking, then suddenly he felt something on his foot. Yes. As they continued walking, then the foot started to swell. Then it became an emergency. I think he was in coma for about two weeks or something. I don't know. I forget the details. He's here somewhere. Yeah. He survived. He almost died. So when he survived, he came out Psalm 94 verse 1. Oh God of vengeance. Oh God of vengeance. Show forth thyself. So now he lives ever to take his vengeance on the snake that tried to shorten his life on this earth. That's why you need a lamp for your feet because you may be walking and you suddenly feel hey! Hey! What is that? So, what is the light? The light is the word of God. So whenever people do things outside the word of God, outside of what God's word says, they don't understand that they are walking on a, a path And there may be a snake crossing. Because normally they won't bite you. But if you step on it. Life has many pains. I'm telling you. You can miss a lot of the pains. By using the lamp. The lamp for your feet. Thy word is a lamp for my feet. And a light for the path that I am on. It will guide. Do this. Do this. Do this, do this. That's why last week I was preaching about what shall I do next? And today I'm preaching about where shall I go next? Where the light guides you is where you are going to go. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor or ask your neighbor, what shall I do next? Ah, how many want to know what I shall do next? And then how about where shall I go next? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Are you ready for where I shall go next? But I think already you are full, isn't it? What I have given you already is enough. 
Okay. Turn with me now to Jonah. Chapter 1. Verse 1. At least when you go home and they ask, what did you learn when you went to church? You say, Jonah. (laughs) Jonah. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, the what? What came to Jonah? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. So, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, verse 2, Arise and go to Nineveh. Where shall I go? Where shall I go next? The word of the Lord comes to Jonah and says, Arise, get up, get up. Lazy bones, get up. Don't sleep. And go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh. That great city. Let me tell you today, wherever you go, make sure the Lord is the one sending you there and you are going to do the will of God. Look, I want you to become conscious of God. Conscious of the Holy Spirit. Conscious of what does God want me to do. Not just, oh, it's nice here. Oh, it's nice there. Oh, they have a lake there. Oh, they have a beach there. I want to be by the beach. You want to be by the beach? You want to be by the beach? You've got to be serious, huh? We don't go to places just because of beach. Where shall I go next? You're a man of God. You are watching me. This is the word of the Lord to you. This is the word of the Lord to every one of us. It's not about following gold and silver, but it's about following the word of the Lord. Arise and go to Nineveh. That great city. Amen. Now, God has chosen your city. And maybe God is sending you to a great city. And he usually sends people to great cities. After he's been sent to the great cities, the gospel now spreads to the smaller towns. Because the city feeds the rest of the country. So I'm not surprised that he sent him to that great city. Nineveh. So beginning from today, I want you to question where you are. I think Ghanaians are some of the most migrated people in the whole world. Yes. We are a traveling nation. You see, if you go next door, and next door, and next door, and next door, you rarely find certain flights that come to Ghana. They don't come anywhere. Just to Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Our airport is a busy airport because we have movers moving up and down. Oh, yes. Arise. Never decide to be in a city because it is rich. You know, I want you to know something. That one of the greatest challenges to the word of God is money. You see, you cannot serve God or mammon. Both of these are requiring service. You cannot serve God or mammon. Amen. Mammon is money. You cannot serve two masters. One will be asking for for you. And the other is also asking. 
Two what? Masters. They are both masters. Who is your master? That is why in full-time ministry, we, the condition is that you are subject to another master. You are, you are submitted to another master, not money. That is full-time ministry. And in the first love church, um, many of us, even lay people, are not being subjected to money. Money is one of the greatest guides. You see people, the reason why you are in this country is you went there for money, for career, for this, for that. It's not a good guide. God is a better guide. God is a better master to serve. He's a better master. Yes, I'm glad that I serve God. God is a better master than mammon. Look at the verse. You cannot serve two masters. Both of them want your service. Both of them want you to follow them. Both of them want you to live your life according to their dictates. And he says, you will either, you either love one or hate the other. So that means that you, you either hate not the devil. This is not the devil. You see, we, we, are, we are getting it wrong. The devil is not mammon. Mammon is money. Finances, success, wealth. It's not the devil. <laughs> but he presents himself as a master. Follow me. Come here. Get up at 8 o'clock. Get up at 4. And work. Work. Work till, work till this time. Work till this time. Come on Tuesday. Come on Wednesday. Come on Thursday. Come on Friday. Come. Go. Okay, you can have only 15 days off. He's your master. He's telling you when to wake up, when to work, what to do. You can't serve that and also serve God. That's what the Bible says. You either love one or hate the other. You know, for me, I would say that all through the ministry, the last 35 to 40 years, my greatest struggle has been to get people free from that control and be at liberty to be of service to God. So, arise and go to that great city. Not to get money because it's a great city. Now, to do what? To do the will of God in the city that you've been sent to. That great city. And cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. Now, when you go, where shall I go next? You are to go where the will of God, the word of God is sending you. And you are to do what God says you are supposed to do. How many are ready to follow God? Don't follow your feelings. The Bible says to be carnal. Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded is death. In other words, when your mind is influenced by carnality, when your mind is influenced by flesh, feelings, it leads to death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The first time I noticed this scripture was when our universities were closed down and the Lord was guiding me to do something with my time in 1983. And the Lord was telling me that take decisions based on a spiritual reason, not on the flesh. To be carnally man that everything is influenced by the flesh. It will lead to your destruction. When you are choosing a girl, you don't just look on the outside and carnally look at her and say, wow, the buttons are this size. The, what do you call it, is that length. And so this is what I want. To be carnally minded, that your mind is just, the mind, you see, you see, your mind is the computer at the top, which is being fed with various inputs. 
and then your computer or the mind will take the decision. So flesh makes an input, spirit makes an input, word of God makes an input, preaching makes an input, but at the end of the day, the mind has to decide. And you end up doing what your mind decides. Recently, I saw uh, a man who had been paralyzed. Paralyzed completely from the neck down. It's called a, I think it's called a quadriplegic. Yeah. I'm not sure whether he was a quadriplegic or a paraplegic. But he was completely paralyzed. No, no, I think it was from up. So you know what they did? They've invented something that... And, and those, those type of cases are like... You remember there was a guy called Superman. Superman he had an accident and he... he he, he, that, he, uh, he had that. They have invented something that when you think, when you think, it transmits the impulses from your brain to the legs. So the man who could never walk has been able to stand and has been able to walk. He has to think. When he thinks, then, I think it's in Germany also, when he thinks, then it a thought comes and then it passes through and is able to stand. Then he's able to take a step. So the man said the thing that he uh, had enjoyed most is to be able to stand at the bar again. Yes. <laughs> he's been able to stand at the bar, the drinking bar. I mean, I, not to drink, but I'm just, I think, to fellowship or to just... Don't be thinking of the alcohol. I'm talking about Standing. So, so the mind is telling you, your body, what to do. You see, they, they've understood that the instructions are coming from the brain. When you, when you think or whatever, then it moves, move the leg. Then you have to think, leg move. Then it makes the leg move. So your mind is the computer. So there are various inputs coming to your mind. One is carnality. One is fleshliness. And the word of God is also making its input. What does God say? Oh, yes. So, Jonah received an input from the word of the Lord. Go to Nineveh. Cry against it. Amen. Now, what happened? He found a ship. Going to Tarshish. Verse 3. Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. Joppa is Tel Aviv. When we go to Israel, if we get a chance to go there, Joppa is a place that's where Jonah went to. So when we go to Israel, this is one of the places to go to. That is also where uh, this, remember the guy where Peter was sent to preach to? Right? They go to Joppa. That guy was there as well. So Jonah rose up to flee and he went down to Joppa. And when he found a ship going to Tashish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Where shall I go next? I'm going away from God. I'm going away from the presence of the Lord. I just want to say something, you know. There is no job that is worth having if it takes you away from the presence of the Lord. It's not worth having that job. Yes. It's not worth it. I remember Kenneth Hagin. I thought such things only applied to him. He said, no, there was this guy in his church when he was a pastor. He had got a job. And when he got, he said, the man didn't even bother to find us. There a church there. Will I have fellowship? Will I do this? I'll have this. I'll have this. I'll have this. And the man went there and he lost his salvation and lost everything. So you don't go away from the presence of God. I don't see why it's not worth it. 
I wouldn't want to send my child anywhere where my child is going away from the presence of... It's not worth it. Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The four billionaires who were in the submarine. Four billionaires. Huh? We pray that their souls will be with the Lord. But if their souls are not with the Lord, billionaires, wow, what are you going to get? Bible says, what shall it profit the man if he gained the whole world? He has everything and his soul is lost. It's not worth it. A few years on earth with everything and you still have to go. No matter what. Life is like the, it's like the life of a soccer player. You see that when you start playing, you know that your days are numbered. Soon, no matter how good you are, eh? no matter how wild you've been, your time will soon, they will, they will soon call you for a meeting. I saw one of our players recently. They are saying they want to move him from where he is. And I saw they, they, they brought another person. They said the number of passes that, he, he, that connect, the number of this, they've measured all. And they said that his passes are some 2% less than another guy's passes. And so your time is finished. Find your way and go. Amazing. So, go not away from the presence of God. Away from God. But you rather go towards God. Where shall I go next? Jonah? Where shall I go next? He went away from the presence of the Lord. Let your life be guided by godly principles. Oh yes. I've seen people lose their salvation just because of the word America. They lose their ministry just because of America or England or Germany or whatever. What is it if you go and you get everything and you lose your salvation? I prefer my child to be in a humble place where the presence of the Lord is. Yes. They have what? Worship every Wednesday. Yes. Worship on Wednesdays. The humble place. Rather than a place where they are teaching them perversions. Amen. Lift your hand and say, I want to go nearer God. So where shall I go next? All these are telling you where to go next. All these are telling you where to go next. Amen. All right. So he paid the fare. He paid money to go away from God. You are going to Jack's house. John's house. You are paying transport to take a bus to go further away, Uber, from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid. And cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the words that were in the ship into the sea. To lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep. Now if you are afraid on the journey. Just sleep because you not hear and notice all the... Movement. So Jonah is actually giving a key to traveling for those of us who struggle with this turbulence and all those things. Just sleep. So Jonah was fast asleep. So the shipmasters came to him 
and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. You see, what meanest thou? Ask your neighbor, what meanest thou, O sleeper? You are sleeping during floor prayer meeting. What meanest thou, O sleeper? What, what do you mean? Like, it, the, the sleep has a meaning. Tell your neighbor, your sleep has a meaning. How can you sleep during flow prayer meeting? One time we had a flow prayer meeting. The flow prayer meeting ended. Like, we had, it had ended, crowd, but the people were online. So wondering why are these people online? They have fallen asleep. They, they have slept and they are still online. The device is on. So you think they are praying extra, but they were they are falling asleep. They forgot to turn off their. Devices. Tell your neighbor your sleep has a meaning. That's why I don't enjoy people sitting in front of me and sleeping. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? What do you mean? One day there was a guy who was criticizing one of my pastors that he said that the church is not using the money properly. So the pastor took the account files and went to that church member's house in the evening, around 8 o'clock. He sat down with the accounts. Here is the man and here is his wife who were accusing and he started going through the account. So as he was going through the, he looked at the guy. He has fallen asleep. You that were accusing, we have brought the accounts to come and explain it to you. Now he had fallen asleep. What do you mean by that? That's why you don't have to follow accusers. You just leave them. All right. So the shipmaster came to him, verse 6, and said unto him, What meanest thou? Arise. Verse 7. And they said everyone to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. I think the election was rigged because he was feeling sleepy. So Jonah was selected as he was elected as the winner of the election because he was sleeping. And before he realized, they say, Hey, based on this, sometimes when they said the people don't know what to do, say, let, let us just choose one person. And they said, You are the one. Now, today you must be asking yourself, for what cause is this evil come upon us? Look at the scripture. For whose cause is this evil upon us? Maybe you are traveling and you have taken a journey and a, an evil is befalling you. You've decided to go a certain way and evil befalls us. Huh? Then they said unto him, tell us we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon us. Verse 8. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are thou? Like, who are you? On this boat, you are a passenger. Who, who are you? Something bad is happening to all of us because of you. Verse 9. And he said, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord. The God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Really? You fear the Lord and you, you have run away. <laughs> are you sure? You see, sometimes our words and our actions are so different. I fear the Lord and what is your whole life is running away from God. Your whole life is going away from his presence. Tell your neighbor, please learn something from Jonah. Oh, Yes. Please learn something from Jonah. Amen. Now, what verse are we on? Verse 9. I'm a Hebrew. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? 
Huh? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Now, brothers and sisters, don't go away from God. Nearer my God to thee. Nearer and nearer. Luke chapter 15. The Bible says there was a certain man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Notice the next verse. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. I want to be far from my father. I want to be far from my house. I want to be as far from everything that is going on. That's why some people sit at the back. They sit in the last corner. They will come early, but they will sit at the back. I want to be at a far country. When Adam and Eve got into trouble and sinned, they moved far from the presence of God and they were hiding among the trees. Look at this verse again. Luke 15 and verse 13. It says, The younger son gathered all and took his journey into a far country. Far, 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 far. Always try to come nearer. Come near. Come closer. Come close to Jesus. Come close to God. Instead of going far. Where should you go next? Go nearer God. Go nearer God. Go nearer the presence of the God. Of, of the Lord. Go nearer to God. That's where you should go next. Someone's asking, are you expecting me to say whether it's Morocco or Nigeria? Or Germany? No, I'm telling you what happened in Jonah's life. Go nearer. Oh, yes. Where do you find God? Go there. If going somewhere will take you far from your God, far from church, far from anything to with God, I don't think that God is going to take you there. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he's losing his soul? What is all the money you are going to get? What, what is he going to do? What are you going to do with it? Go nearer to God. And they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me and cast me forth into the sea, so that the sea shall be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. For what? For my sake. You see, in the Bible we see the reasons for things. The great storm that you are in. Storms come to your life. You will remember, if you are not in a storm today, when you go away from God, storms come. Storms that you can't overcome. Storms that kill. Storms that drown. Storms that finish your life. Storms that end everything. He says, I know that I'm the reason why this storm has come. And he was right. If you are here and God has called you, how? Where shall I go next? You shall go where the presence of the Lord is and where the Lord guides you to. No question. No question. I thank God I went to school. I thank God I'm a medical doctor. I thank God that my, my mother is here. I'm, I'm Swiss, as Swiss as I am Ghanaian. Exactly the same. Half, half. I'm not standing for uh, parliament. But that's, my, that's the reality. I don't have to be here. I don't have to be here. I chose to be here. I chose to be where the presence of the Lord is. All my life I have chosen that. Take me nearer God. Not take me nearer money. Take me nearer prosperity. Take me nearer this. Take me nearer this business. Take me nearer whatever. No. Nearer to God and nearer to God's presence. That's my decision. And he said, I know the reason for this trouble. Maybe you are having a kind of a curse or kind of a trouble. It always comes when you run away from God's presence and God's will for your life. God has told you go to Nineveh. You are going somewhere else. God has told you do this. You are doing something different. As soon as we heard the word of the Lord, he went and took a bus to the opposite direction. Do you expect to have peace? When I spoke to Prophet Kakra some years ago, 
I told him, he said he wants to be full-time missionary. I told him, you don't have any, you cannot be full-time. He told me, if I am afraid I will die if I don't serve God. After school, as soon as he finishes architecture, he said, I am afraid I will die if I don't do this. That must be the conviction. Paul said, what is me if I preach not the gospel? I'm afraid not to do it. I'm afraid. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, underline, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If God is calling you, say yes, don't say no. Say yes, don't say no. I will strongly advise you. He said, where shall I go next? Where is not a country? Where is the presence? Where is the, where God is? The presence of God. Where is not a city per se, but it is where God is. And God is where he has asked you to be. Jesus said, I know my father is always with me because I always do what he asked me to do. I always do his will. My father has not left me because I always do what he asked me to do. Look at this verse. Beautiful. He that sent me is where? With me. The father has not left me alone. Why? For I always do those things that please him. I always do what pleases him. And what does that result in? Look at the verse. And he that sent me is with me. He is with me. Look at the life. He that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. The father has not left me alone. Why? For I always do those things that please him. So Jonah was in serious trouble. Take me and cast me forth into the sea. Nevertheless, the men didn't want to listen to him. <laughs> so they rode hard to bring it to the land. But they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Now I want to tell you something. I've not been to space. But I've been on a ship. And I've been on the ocean. And I'll tell you that if there is a frightening place, one of the frightening places is the ocean. One time I was on a ship. Eh? I went to the railing like this. You see, when you go over, it's about six floors before you get to the ground. And the water is black. It's just black. Sometimes it's icy cold. As I was standing, I was afraid. I think I was with one of my children. I was holding her. I was afraid to go near. This is what Jonah was asking them. You throw me. Throw me. Everybody didn't even mind him. They started to roll. They said, no, we will, not, we will not throw you. Verse 14. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and they said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life. In other words, we are going to kill one man. Lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. Now, you know, when you, when you commit a sin, you must fear reprisals. And you must fear judgment. You are going to kill an innocent man who is a passenger. You are going to throw him out. So they knelt down. They prayed, Lord, we are going to kill this man. Forgive us in advance. <laughs> Forgive us for what we are about to do. It's a serious thing to kill somebody. You see, you people must know if you shed blood, you will rip. If you tell a lie, you will rip. If you deceive people, you will rip it. If you are a traitor, you will rip it. There are consequences. It may not be today. It, because I'm sure this people will say, what, 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 what will happen? But you see the spirituality and the, they knew that this thing is happening because of a, a reason. This storm is coming for a reason. And they knew when we also throw this man, we may make our situation even worse. So they said, forgive us before we sin. 
Your fornications are not free. And your adulteries are not free. And your lies. And your deceptions. You must have a fear that the Lord will respond to this thing. He will. And they were afraid. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from raging. I'm sure when they put him in, they said, Oh, we shouldn't have put him in. I'm sure the, the, the storm would have calmed down just now. Why didn't we wait five minutes more? But you see, the real reason why the storm had gone down was because Jonah was now no more in the boat. Maybe you are in the boat. That's why everybody is experiencing turbulence. Sometimes somebody's sin and somebody's mistake is affecting your own stability because the person is connected to you. Jonah was connected to all the other passengers. All the passengers were going to die because of him. That's why sometimes when you see certain people on the flight, say, thank God this person is on the flight. Through the person's righteousness, I may be saved. <laughs> hey. So they took Jonah, verse 16. Now the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Wow. Eh? They, they, they now believe in God through Jonah's ministry. <laughs> Listen, are you there? Are you, are you listening? I hope you are enjoying Jonah, Jonah's life. Yeah. Listen, Jonah knew there's no way out. It's my life that God wants. Young man, I want to tell you, God wants you. The whole of your life is his is your life. You are you are what God wants. And there are many things God will never say no until you give him yourself. And I will tell you, one man is very valuable. If you give yourself to God, it's a very great value. In Second Corinthians 8. He said, I think verse 3 or 4, he said, you gave yourself first, then after you gave yourself to me, and then after you gave to the Lord. Jonah, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Yeah. God wants you. God likes you. God chooses you. I, 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 I gave myself, you know, when God called me, I offered God some money. I said, Lord, I will give you money. I'm going to America to earn money as a doctor. And I'll give a lot of money to the church. This was my negotiation with God. And God said, I don't need your money. I need you. Now look at me here. Supposing I, how much could I have donated to the church? No, I'm asking you, how much do you think as a doctor all these years, well, how much would I have donated? I know, I know doctors. I know a lot of doctors. How much do they give? How much can they give? Not that they don't want to give. How much can you give? This is up to a point. How much have I raised? Money have I raised in, in the church? For the church? For the work of God? How much, how much money have I raised? So my presence is far more valuable than what I can give. My, my, me. Me. I, I, am the, I am the valuable... I am the valuable uh, item. <laughs> I'm the valuable commodity. That's what's valuable. Yes. The person. Me, if you ask me what's my most valuable, if I was on my last breath and asked me what's the most valuable thing that I have, I would mention people's names. There are names I would just mention. I would say, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. That's what I would do. If I had more time, I will keep on adding names. And this person said, that was the most valuable thing that I had. I wouldn't say money. Money is also important, but a person, to me, is far more. You want to know how valuable a person? That's, do you know why they pay CEOs so much money? Have you ever wondered, 
the person who is working in the bank, at the end of the year, he can have two million pounds bonus. Eight percent of the profit. You see the one who is shining the glass on the. He's earning thousand four hundred CDs. The, that's CDs. In Ghana, the man who is up there is earning hundred thousand dollars a month. And you even ask, is there any correlation at all? There's no relation. It's not in steps. So, the man there is so valuable. They've learned it with time that a person is very valuable. That is why you have see the, the millions, millions. That person is worth the whole. He can just make take some decision, and everything will just end. They've learned it. They've learned it over the years. You are far more valuable to God than what, what pennies are you going to give to God? You may even give those pennies with some criticism and talk. You, you, hey, how I would have criticized? I would have criticized some of the pastors in town. And I said, look at them. Look at the cars they are driving. They call themselves men of God. One of their cars could have bought about 25 other cars. Eh? They, they, they are not modest. They are not modest. I say, the Bible says moderation. I, I would have had verses. Oh God, thank you Jesus that I came to save you. Thank you. I'm even, I'm even afraid of myself. What kind of words I would have used on the church? Are you not also scared? The things I'm saying, does it not also frighten you? If I hadn't, what kind of, how I would speak and now how we have logic and words to say things about churches and, and pastors. It wouldn't have been good. No. But I just thank him every day. You know, sometimes when I go home, I, when I go, I go to my bathroom, I just kneel down by myself. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. Thanks for choosing me. Thanks for liking me. Thanks for sending me. Thanks for giving me the privilege, the honor of being yours. But my whole life is for God. Never reject the call and the sending of God. It may not make sense. And I I tell you, you see, even God was trying to send you, what type of message are you going to preach? going to cry against them. People are in their houses. You are going to cry against them. You are going to cause a whole lot of trouble. (laughs) Or you don't get what I'm saying. You are going to cause trouble by the type of preaching you are preaching. It's going to lead to a crisis. Let's look at the last verse. The last verse. Jonah chapter 1. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now, you see, this is where and, and, the, and, and, and Jonah was in the belly three days and nights. You see, again, we have people criticizing this verse. How can a fish, how can a fish swallow? Now, let's start. A whale, a blue whale, the heart is as big as a VW beetle. That can take four passengers. They put up a VW beetle, they don't know beetle, these people there. These people don't know beetle. I need a beetle on stage. Then the stomach has four compartments. And the stomach takes one ton of fish. It eats one ton in a day. One ton. Then the veins put up one ton. Then the veins, the veins, a man can swim in the veins. You can swim in the blood vessel of a whale. Yes. 
It is the, the biggest will they have expected is 33 meters. This hall is 100 meters. So one third. So the will will be like from here. Somewhere here to the door. And it weighs the weight of about 30 elephants. The tongue weighs one elephant. When, when, that, when it does it, it's an elephant. Let's be serious. Ah, uh-huh, that's the beetle. Yes. This car is the size of the hat. The hat. Now, the reason why they say, and when the, when the you see your heart beats 80 times a minute, but the whale will beat once in a minute. Because hey! like that, then it will be there, then all the blood will go out. Yeah, for one minute. Then another one. <laughs> Maximum two times. It's huge. It's a major thing. But anyway, the reason why they say a man cannot stay, they say that the acid in the stomach, the pH is about two, and it's too acidic for a man to stay there. Yes. But you see, and also, by the way, when the whale goes, when he stays underwater, it goes about 30 minutes old. But he comes up to breathe. The maximum a blue whale can stay underwater is 90 minutes. He has to come up to breathe, always. So they, they come up and breathe all the time. And so it's unusual but possible. It's unusual but possible. That's what the space there, the space. Yes. You can even go swimming in the veins. But anyway, Jesus believed in this story. And he said, no other sign. Jesus himself could, it will be given to accept the sign of Jonah. A sign is when something unusual happens. When something unusual happens, they are supposed to, it's supposed to make you notice. Yeah. So maybe you were thinking about something, and today I've come preaching about Jonah. It should make you a little worried about something God is trying to tell you. Where shall I go next? I shall go towards the presence of the Lord. I shall go where the word of the Lord sends me. And there is no way for you to ever escape the word of the Lord. Follow him. Follow him. Follow Jesus. So, but that guy is taking you out. A man who is taking you away from God. Let me tell you, young lady, it's not going to be long before he'll be tired of you. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. You'll be tired of you. And you'll be left there and you realize you are not capturing his imagination anymore. His imagination is no more working when he sees you. He's tired of you already. So follow the Lord. Now in Jonah chapter 2, he laments and he repents. Jonah chapter 2. Jonah repents. Forgive me. And Noah, Noah prayed out of the fish's belly. Everyone who is in a fish belly, start praying immediately. Ask your neighbor, are you in the belly of a fish? Are you in a fish belly? And the Bible says he cried, verse 2. He cried by reason of his affliction. Whenever we are afflicted, it should make us pray. It shouldn't make us hardened. Some of you become hardened when you go through difficult. You become hardened. I will never change. I will never repent. I will never turn around. I will never. It is demonic. But Jonah, in the midst of his affliction, he cried out of the belly of hell. And he said, oh Lord, hear my voice. And throughout the whole of that chapter, God heard his voice. Verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. The second time. Everybody say the second time. God is giving me a second chance. God is a God of the second chance. He's even a God of a third chance. He's God who is always giving you chances. He said the word of the Lord came to Jonah again the second time. Wow. And what is the word of the Lord this time? Verse 2. He said go unto the same place. It's not too late. To that great city. And preach what? The preaching that I bid thee. No change. God doesn't change his mind. 
Second Corinthians 11, or 11, it says that, hey, what's that? It says that uh, the calling, the gift and calling of God, they are without repentance. There will be no change in the call of God. No change at all. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, go and preach the, sa- the same preaching. Put that scripture on. Oh, we've, okay, we had a problem. Hey, yes. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Make sure you find your way into the house of the Lord and to do. God won't change his mind, though. God won't change it. You can change your mind. God won't change his mind about what he told you. I just want you to know. Go, look at verse 1 again. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. How many are glad that God is a God of at least two chances? Huh? You know there are some exams they tell you you can't do it more than three times. When you do, you can't. Sorry, you can't do again. You can't, you will never, you will never be able to be this. You can't do it more than two times, three times. Thank God, he's a God of the second chance. Tell your neighbor, God seems to be giving you a second chance, brother. Yes. Type on your phone. Those of you who are holding your phones, type on your phone. God is a God of a second chance. Yes. God is giving you a second chance. Amen. God loves you. God, I don't know why God wants you. How many feel that God wants you to do something for him? I don't even know why sometimes God doesn't change. He says, you are the one I want. You are the one. He seems to want you. He seems to desire you. Where shall I go? Go to his presence. Go towards God. Don't go away from God. Don't go far to a far country. Go near him. I feel something. You know what I feel? I feel God likes you. God wants you. He, he, he seems to have... Have you ever noticed when a man says, I love you, he says to a girl, I love you. Sometimes if you are a girl, I don't know how to be a girl, but if you are a girl, sometimes you wonder, why does he like me? And he keeps on saying, oh, I really love you, I really like you, I, I like you. I just, hey! And you'll be thinking, also, hey, what are all these words? Hey! Because you don't know how to receive love. That is why you are saying all this, A. Hey. Wow. Thanks for choosing. Where is she? Thanks for reaching. Thanks for choosing me. Thanks for choosing me. Thanks for reaching out to me. Thanks for loving me. And I want us to all say to God today, thank you for choosing me to be a basenta leader, to be a pastor. Thanks for sending me as a missionary. Thanks for liking me. Thanks for insisting on me. Oh. Can you imagine if somebody said, take the food? And he said, no, 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 no. Let that person bring it. Do you remember one time President Rollins was giving a speech? And uh, there was a lady holding a microphone for him. Do you remember that video? Yeah. Then they, they brought another more official person to come and hold. And he said, he, he, he continued preaching after, but he said, no. Can you let the other one come? <laughs> I said, I mean, Charlie, something so general. I mean, the, the one to hold the mic even is chosen. You'll be chosen for special events. You'll be chosen for special things. You'll be chosen by God to do something special for him. I thank God. Many times when I'm, Uncle K, I've, I've seen you just walking in, Uncle Krobo. You've been at the back. Because of my preaching, that's why you came forward. Okay. <laughs> you know, the greater love is my basenta. So I have a personal, whatever. Yeah. Some of you don't know that I am a basenta leader. <laughs> yes. What a blessing. I feel God specifically, He wants you to hold the mic. Wow, he wants you to do certain things. Yes, sometimes he, sometimes God wants money, but he doesn't want anybody's money. He wants your money. Many times I've been there, people offer me for I said, no, I don't receive food from every, every hand. Many times, no. 
Thank you. Not that I'm not hungry, but I don't. The hunger is there, but it's not. Your hand has not been chosen to give me that thing. May the Lord open your heart to say yes. When a man, no, not let me say a man, but if somebody is laughing, so I really love you, you should say yes, 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 yes. I wish I had some of these first love responses to yes, 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 instead of this, oh, we thank God. Oh, we thank God. Oh, it is well. When they say, I love you, I need you, I want you, you should be saying, yes, 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 yes. Instead of standing, say, by the grace of God, it is well. All things work together for good. Huh. Every standing, every standing, every standing. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me. Lift your hand, say, Thank you, Jesus, for sending me. I can hear you say, Thank you. Am I speaking to English, English speaking people? Say, Thank you, Jesus, for calling me. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. Thank you, Jesus, for liking me. I like you too. Say, I like you too. I like you too. I want you too. I need you too. I'm happy that you called me. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes you are giving money and God doesn't even want the money. He, he doesn't want that money. He wants your money. It's true. I believe that. Lift your hands. And surrender all to Jesus. All to Jesus. follow your call we surrender all to you today we say Jesus you are calling us you are sending us we shall go we will go nearer your presence not away from your presence all the days of your life now I want you to lift your hand and say to the Lord all the days of my life I will go nearer the presence of God all the days of my life I will go nearer nearer God nearer anything that takes me away from God any man who takes me away from God any woman who takes me away from God any person who takes me away from the presence of God I reject that person in my life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I surrender all
Father, thank you for calling us and choosing us. In Jesus' name, we surrender all. Any Jonah here, any person who here is a Jonah, is repenting right now and turning around to come towards your presence. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And as every head is bowed, if you are here today and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want to just pray with you before we close. We want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. If you are here like that, lift your hand like this. You see my hand lifted like this. Just lift your hand wherever you are. Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you. Then lift your hand. Lift your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe this is the first time you've come here. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. If you lifted your hand like this, come to me here. Come to the front very quickly. I want to pray with you. Come very quickly. Come from upstairs. Come from the side. You just have two minutes. Come, I want to pray with you very quickly. Come running, come running quickly. Come all the way from wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. And come wow. into that come sea, sea. from wherever you are. Come from wherever you are. His grace will be your covering. His love so freely. Now, maybe you are here and you are Jonah. You are Jonah running away from God also join lift your hand and you can join this group also I want to pray with you maybe you are Jonah running away from God but today you want to say I won't run away from God again I will come to God come also to the front I want to pray with you come running come running to that mercy maybe you are watching online you are watching online Jesus is calling you now don't run away from his don't run away from God don't run away from church don't run away from his presence alright say this prayer with me say Jesus please forgive me for my sins I can't hear you say Jesus please forgive me for my sins I give my heart to Jesus Christ please write my name in the book of life from today I can't hear you from today I open my heart and I receive Jesus as my savior my lord my master Jesus is my savior from today oh God I can't hear you say oh God please wash me with the blood of Jesus thank you for saving me in the name of Jesus lift your hand like this say Satan from today I cast you out of my life I will not save you again I will not obey you again in the name of Jesus Satan you are finished now lift up your two hands like this say Jesus I love you Jesus I thank you for saving me today in Jesus